you guys remember, right? You had NVIDIA coming out of the 50-day moving average exploded. You had Amazon coming out of the 50-day moving average exploded. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, happy Monday, everybody. Hope everybody had a great uh, Mother's Day weekend. Welcome to uh, the first uh, AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show of the week. Uh, hope everybody had a good day. So here's kind of where we are. And I think going into tomorrow is an incredibly important day, okay? A uh, very, very important day uh, for the Bulls and the Bears. I, I believe the over-under, and we'll get to the specific numbers in a second, I think is going to impact very, very short-term trading, uh, whether you are a perma bull or perma bear, or if you are a trader who trades uh, both sides of the market. So let's kind of rewind, right? So for the better half of the last several weeks, for the exception of maybe Wednesday, Thursday, right? We've been pretty much sell bias. We've been talking about semiconductors uh, going lower, you know, pretty much predominantly uh, taking the action, leading us higher, leading us lower. And the way we closed Friday, I, I said on the, on the nightly video that if any group is going to lead us higher, it's going to be the semiconductors. And if you look at a lot of how the semiconductors closed on Friday, we got rejected off the 10-day moving average. So if the market was going to continue higher, this was going to be the group that was going to take us up. Um, and that was kind of, let's put that to the side. The other thing that we've seen for the last several weeks, uh, when we started seeing earnings being released by you know the Googles of the world, the Facebooks, the Amazons, the Teslas, Apple, so forth and so on, we've been seeing the same thing. No matter how good uh, the earnings have been, they've been getting sold, right? Really, really aggressively sold. And so we knew that as well. And the one thing that I know more than anything itself is I know when good news is being sold over and over and over again, that's usually not a good sign. So we kind of went into today's session. If you guys remember from, from the weekend video, I believe that the Friday session was, it was force fed on us, right? There was no really big call buying going into this week. Uh, the Dow at one point was up like 300 points on Friday and it, they almost force fed us kind of a close to the strength, you know, to, you know to, to make us feel really good inside that we were gonna rally right back. And the one thing that I keep on noticing year after year after year, when you keep on getting good news, right, and the market still can't go higher, that's a big problem. So what do we know? We know earnings were being sold on good earnings, right, on uh, you know all the mega cap, uh, gorilla, primo, you know, feel good hedge fund darlings. We also know that a lot of names, for example, like a Tesla, we'll get to Tesla in a second, uh, got sold on that really good PR uh, last week about how, hey, you know, we're exceeding demand. We should go hot. No, no, we got sold, right? And when you woke up this morning, you had, a, you had three things happen, right? Well, you had two things happen. You had Google gets downgraded, it gets sold. You got Facebook gets downgraded, it gets sold. You got NVIDIA gets upgraded or initiation at bear with an $800 price target. Guess what? It gets sold. So if things are going down, no matter what is going on, good news, bad news, or indifferent, you kind of get that first inclination that, you know what, the sell bias is there for you. Now you just have to take advantage of the side of the market. And I believe that tomorrow's session, like I started the video, is going to be incredibly important. Now, usually I would turn around and say, well, guys, based on the data, I'm very, very buy biased, or based on the data, I'm very, very sell biased. And the reason why I say, Let's just kind of look back at this, take a step back and look at this. You'll see in a second. So if you guys remember, there was a huge range that took out all the way back to March the 31st. This was an important range because it reclaimed the 50-day moving average. Everybody see that, guys? This whole level here, this 324, 325 level, because again, it broke the downtrend, it broke a cycle of selling, and it started this really aggressive run for the next two, three weeks. You guys remember, right? You had NVIDIA coming out of the 50-day moving average exploded. You had Amazon 
coming out of the 50-day moving average exploded. You had Apple coming out of the 50-day moving average. You get it, exploded, so forth and so on. Facebook, all of them, right? 50-day moving average exploded. So now here is where we are going into tomorrow. So if you guys see where we are, we are back closed right at the 50-day moving average. Let's, let's not split hairs. The 50-day moving average was 325.88. We close at 325.70s, and the keys are down, you know, 40, 50 cents uh, after the close. That, you know, again, I don't want to split hairs here. Remember, the ETFs are completely different animals. But why this is important, why this close is important, why tomorrow's action is going to be super duper important, because this is where the whole breakout started from. And if we close below the 50 day moving average tomorrow, we're going to start selling along very, very aggressively. At, there's a flip side to that as well. If we gap lower tomorrow and reclaim the 50-day moving average, then everything is going to go back higher, and you could use the previous, and you can excuse me, you could use the day's low as your stop. So it's not one of those days. Usually, I, you know, I turn around and say, yeah, I love this one as a long, I love this one as a short. Everything could be a long and a short tomorrow, depending on who takes control of the 50-day moving average. Now, the way I look at it is if we gap up tomorrow and we go green to red. Then we're going to attack that 50-day moving average, and we're going to have a really, really aggressive sell bias for the day. If we gap lower tomorrow, based on today's pretty aggressive close, you had nearly you know 3% move on the Nasdaq Composite. If you get a gap down tomorrow, and they trap shorts and they reclaim the 50-day moving average, then we're going to have a very aggressive rally back because there's two cases that you could turn around, right? You, the, if you believe in the bull case, then yes, we have to hold the 50 day moving average tomorrow, reclaim it back and rally. If you are in the bear case, say, look, you, the market had its run. There is no catalyst. They've been selling off the market that started off as profit taking. And now that's selling. And now this is the line in the sand. This is the great piece of, uh, you know, this is the great game of chicken. And somebody is going to literally lose tomorrow. Okay. It's not going to be debatable which way the wind is going to blow. If we close below the 325, 324 level tomorrow, we're going to go lower, right? We're going to start filling in this whole gap here that started, you know, at the end of March. If we wash out tomorrow and reclaim the 50-day moving average, then we're going to start rallying back tomorrow. And a lot of names that got hit today potentially could reclaim and start going higher. So that's why we don't know, right? We, we just don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. A gap up open, I'll be sell bias. A gap down open, I'll still be sell bias if they're taking out opening range lows. But if they never take out opening range lows and they start reclaiming the 50-day moving average, we're going to quickly shift gears. So tomorrow open is very, very important. Of course, are there individual names that look absolutely like, like crap? And we had some pretty aggressive pivots today. You know, does, does Netflix look good? Of course not. Netflix looks like, yeah, I wish my, my e signal would be updating. Take my word for it. There you go. You know, Netflix looks like crap. This is the longest, this is the worst close in this whole formation. Does this thing go low? Yeah, it looks like it's going to go lower. If you look at, for example, of Facebook today, right? First close on this rising support, this thing could go lower. If you look at Amazon, right? You could, if you look at Amazon, first close below this whole rising support, this thing could go lower. Tesla got absolutely destroyed today, right? First close on the 50-day moving average, this thing could go lower. So you have to have a contingency plan tomorrow if it's a gap open, right, to the upside and have a contingency plan if it's an aggressive gap open to the downside. Because what's going to happen by the 10 o'clock channel, we're either going to uh, have opening range lows that are going to be sold below the 50-day moving average or if they hold that initial move, we gap lower, okay, uh, if they start reclaiming supply, then obviously we have to switch gears and go back to the long side. Again, gun to my head tomorrow, I don't know. Maybe sell bias, right? Sell bias at least in the beginning and see what happens. But, uh, you know, you can see the data being collected. Uh, you can see the price action being uh, traded off of a good news, off of bad news, off of good earnings, off of bad earnings, off of, off of upgrades, off of downgrades. They all wound up the same way to the downside. The only play that I kind of like to the upside tomorrow is maybe Coinbase, right? Coinbase has gotten literally, it feels like it's had like what, one, two, three, four, five, five updates since its debut, right? If it starts maybe reclaiming this linear regression line tomorrow, who knows? Maybe it could have a day two run. They do report Thursday. There is some some sort of buzz still, maybe maybe waking up uh, into its earnings. So if there's a natural play 
uh, to the upside tomorrow only if, and again, keep this in mind, you know, this thing sold off seven, eight dollars off its highs. It has to still reclaim today's channels. But if it does reclaim tomorrow's channels, maybe this thing can wake up as well. Uh, some of these Bitcoin names are getting hit. You have Mara, really, really ugly close below this channel. You have Riot, another really ugly close below this channel. Looks like it's going as, as well. So Gunther, I had a look. I say we follow through to the downside. But as we know, you know, guesses and words and anticipation and predictions are as useless as a bikini on a bull. I want to keep it PG. So that's kind of where we are. If you look at today's session, you can see uh, bids getting light very, very quickly. Channels start com computing down, getting confirmed. You had some uh, early strength this morning uh, in a lot of the down names. You had Boeing, you had Disney, some moves to the upside. But the question was going into uh, this week from last, is the Dow going to pull up the NASDAQ, the technology, or is the technology names going to pull down the Dow? And if you look at today's action, you got your answer. Here's the Dow, right? The Dow was up at one point uh, pretty, pretty decent and gave it all the way back, right? It sold, sold off 300 points into the close. Meanwhile, the QQQs just got absolutely, right, absolutely shelled uh, from nut to bolt. So again, very, very important area tomorrow. Uh, that 350, that excuse me, the 50-day moving average is going to be incredibly, uh, incredibly necessary to figure out what's going on there very, very early. The last thing you want to buy, and this is very important to understand, especially new traders, it's incredibly important to understand if we are below supply, excuse me, at this point below demand, right, and that is support. The last thing you want to do is dip by below demand. Okay, I'm telling you right now, the, if you look at the cues, what happened the last time they were below, below demand, right? Let me show you here. So here was the first close below demand, okay? It started five really, really aggressive sell, sell side candles. So be very careful. So any anything that you're looking for to buy, if the cues are underneath the 50-day moving average, you're going to have a very, very uh, tough time defending your position. So let's talk about uh, today's session. Again, there was something there for everybody, some longs, some shorts, but the close was very, very aggressive. And that's obviously how it's closing out uh, the session today. So you had Disney, nice little pop on Disney, uh, 85, 75, 86 needs to build. Here was Disney, right? The mouse house uh, performed very, very well at the open. So it took out that 85, 75. It went to uh, 87. Again, this, remember the Dow stocks are completely in, the old, in their own world until the rug finally got pulled. But nice move there on Disney. Uh, Dell, I kind of liked. I uh, never, you know, never got to the 102 area. Great job. I, again, I usually don't put a lot of uh, small cap names on the feed, but there were two names that really stood out. We'll get to both of them in a second. Uh, Sohu for all you small cap players. Huge volume on Friday into the 50 day, right, guys? 50 day moving average. It doesn't make a difference if you trade small, mid cap, or large. That 50 day is important. So if that 350 builds. Maybe you get a day two move. So here was Soho. Let's check this out. So here was Soho. It hit the 50-day moving average, right, on Friday. It confirmed it this afternoon off that 350. It went to four bucks. Uh, great job for all you guys uh, who took it. Uh, Calm never got to 19. Uh, FUTO is my first uh, trade of the day to the downside. 126 of builds below can flush. Uh, pretty aggressive uh, near-term 105 put buyers. Uh, came in pretty aggressively and pretty often. I thought it could get to 19. That's exactly uh, where it could get. I only scalped this thing, but you know, nice move. Nice move all the way to the 19 off that 126 uh, confirming channel. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else. What else? Uh, Syntas got to 64 and then died on a vine for everything else. Uh, Funko never got to 26. And here's my point, right? NVIDIA initiated with an $800 price target at Baird. I go, look, at this, the market rallies. And it confirmed 600, it, it could go. Yeah, they sold it and they sold it very, very aggressively. And that's the whole point of where we are. XP never got there. And here is the second uh, small cap name that I put in the channel. Uh, ATOS, a bunch of uh, call buying last week on the May uh, 21st expiration, the 250s, the 3s, the 5s, and the 750. Uh, 280, 285 needs to build. Here was uh, ATOS, right? It took out that 8280, 285, and went to 308. Not a bad move. Not a bad move at all on there as well. And here's the FUT 123 is next support from the 26th, then 119. Uh, that's exactly where it went. And then you started seeing things really get aggressive. Uh, Netflix 491, 490, if it builds below, can flush more. Here was Netflix. Again, I, it, it looks lower. I mean, it definitely looks lower, right? So it took out the 490, 491, 490 close, pretty much at the lows. 
uh, pretty much at the lows of the 486 level. Looks like, a, you know, if we get another wave of selling tomorrow, uh, this thing has more room down. Zoom never got to the 85. I still like that trade there. Disney take on the way up. Uh, Boeing take, oh yeah, Boeing. I forgot the, the Boeing pivot. Uh, 239.75, uh, 240 needs to build. Ran up like a dollar and a half, nothing big. Again, they pulled everything after that. But again, that's the whole point of taking on the way and then using break even as your stop. So here was ATOS exploding uh, to the upside here. Dash, not a big move. You know, ran up, you know, man down like a dollar, dollar and a half. I, I still like it lower, but not a, you know, not a big move whatsoever. And here is, I, I made a really, really extensive watch list for uh, for the week, right? At least for Monday. Um, Tesla, here's the two-sided channel and the stock got absolutely murdered. This is, this is why guys, again, we don't care which way the pivots confirm, right? Upside is great, downside is fine. Uh, you started seeing really aggressive put buyers coming in on the weekly, um, on the weekly 625, 600s, even for next week, uh, the 570s, and it took out that 649 level. I thought there was a shot to get to uh, 625. So here was Tesla, right? It took out that 649 level. That was the previous week's lows and just got destroyed. Went all the way down uh, to 629. Uh, I know some of you guys are holding a run. And here, you know, here, here's a, you know, here's a really aggressive put buyers coming in. You know, they're coming in two million dollars worth of premium for the 25s for next week, and they both, you know, they're both about to get paid. So big, big money flow uh, coming in on Tesla uh, and the Qs. Right here's the whole point. 325.88 is the 50-day. Any close below is a big red signal, and that's exactly. Uh, what happened? Uh, this thing exploding. And again, here's the point. Any close under 645 on Tesla can see 625. Uh, the stock right now is trading after hours at 623. So yeah, tomorrow is a big day, guys. Uh, line in the sand. Come in uh, very open-minded. Uh, come in very, very focused. There's a possibility on a two-sided uh, two scenario playing out. But again, if you are a permable and you are uh, strictly buy biased, okay? Again, pay attention to that 50-day moving average. The last thing you're gonna to wanna to do uh, is sit in your portfolio or sit in your short-term positions uh, below supply. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take